Hi everyone, welcome to Math Hour Live. I'm Sarah Knapp, the founder of Math Hour, and I'm so excited you're all here uh, so that we can learn a little bit together and hopefully get some tips and tricks for our next bikepacking trip. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Sierra Nevada. They've been helping us put together this entire bikepacking series, and they always make sure that whenever we're going camping, um, we have some delicious cold brews with us. So thank you, Sierra. Um, and you guys can actually check out um, our full kind of like page of events and um, itineraries, tips and tricks, and some other stuff we have coming down the pipeline. It's a bit.ly slash mappy bike pack. So definitely check that out. Um, and without further ado, I'm so excited to have Cassandra Brooklyn here. She's a New York native and will be sharing with us some of her learnings and adventures, both locally and internationally. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Cassandra and I run a company called Escaping New York, uh, which I'll talk about. And so this picture is was taken in Guantanamo, Cuba. Uh, Guantanamo, the province. A lot of people don't know Guantanamo is a province. It is not just this military base. So that is where this picture is from. So uh, yeah, my name is Cassandra. I live in Brooklyn and I go to Cuba a lot. It started just as fun. Uh, check it out. I started going there about eight years ago and people told me they wanted to start traveling with me. So I started leading tours there and um, yeah. Here I am. And I want to say first and foremost, like I'm not a bike touring pro. Like here I'm talking about bike touring. Don't be scared. <laughs> I, I wrote a, a guidebook to bike touring Cuba. Um, but I don't even consider myself a bike touring pro. And I, I mentioned that because I want this to be accessible, right? I don't want anybody to be afraid like, oh, I've never done a bike tour. I don't know how to give my bike a tune up. Like you don't have to know absolutely everything about your bike to bike tour. And that's really important. So this is a picture of me that I took with 718. 718, uh, Joe gave a great presentation last week. He does the micro tours. So this is me on one of his micro tours about three years ago, about three, four years ago or so. Um, and so I really started uh, doing bike touring in Cuba when I started my travel company. So my travel company is Escaping New York, and I did not start it as a bike tour company at all. It's just, I like to bike. Uh, I run a meetup group here, a food and cycling meetup group. And a lot of people told me they wanted to go to Cuba. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll, we'll add a bike touring component. Um, so that's me and some folks on my trip. Those are actually all New Yorkers on that trip with the Cubans. Um, but I do have folks from all over the place. And while I was in Cuba riding bikes with them and posting on Instagram, a publisher contacted me like I still can't believe they found me on Instagram because I'm not an influencer and I ended up writing this guidebook that came out in December and I did the official launch in um, in Havana um, in November or February of this year so that's me um, in Guantanamo again because I really like Guantanamo apparently um, and that's my book that I wrote I'm including a picture here of my first quote unquote bike tour with my good friend, Judy Desiree, who will be leading a workshop next week, or she'll be doing a, a bike tour presentation around the world. You gotta tune in for that. This girl has bike toured solo through Africa, through South America, through Asia, through Europe, through the US, she's incredible. And my first introduction to bike touring, uh, she and I were up in the Cape Cod area and you can't see my bike, but we are both on single speed bikes <laughs> in a hilly area. And we didn't have any sort of bike paneers. We had backpacks. So you do not need some fancy bike touring bike. Uh, check out Joe's presentation from last week. He talked about uh, different bike setups and different types of bikes that you can consider for bike touring. We took our single speed bikes and we had backpacks with all of our gear and we went on a quote unquote bike tour. We were doing it for four or five days. Um, we took the train or we took the bus up. We found a Craigslist guy, semi sketch to come back, but like there's ways to make it happen. So don't be afraid. Uh, this is a picture from our campsite uh, where we camped. My bike tour, I didn't even think to bring a tent. Like, that's how silly I was. I was like, oh, well, Judy is doing, she's planning this, so she must have a tent. Like, it didn't even occur to me that each person is responsible to bring their own tent. Um, and she's like five inches shorter than me and has a one-person tent, but I had to squeeze in there with her. So we're going to be talking about planning a little bit. 
but I don't want anybody to feel intimidated that you have to have all this experience because you absolutely do not. I didn't start off with a lot of experience and I still don't consider myself super experienced, but um, I have enough information uh, to, to feel comfortable when I'm touring. So I'm gonna talk about research. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures, it's from Havana. Google, I'm putting it number one and that seems so obvious, but sometimes people don't think about the obvious. Like do a Google search. And I say that because like sometimes there's really good uh, websites out there, like bikepacking, for example, is a great website. There might be a super, super detailed post about where you wanna go and you can get your information there. However, if it was written a year ago or two years ago, it might not be relevant right now, particularly with COVID. You wanna do just like a straight up Google search um, or DuckDuckGo, if you don't wanna be traced, uh, I use that. Uh, but that's really important right now because so much has changed during COVID that even a really thorough, excellent blog post that went up six months ago might not be 100% accurate. Okay, so you wanna check the date of the publication of the site and you wanna pick up the phone, old school, actually call and try to get somebody on the phone. And I mention this because I'm planning a bike tour to Long Island right now. And I'm gonna be doing a write-up about that in September. But I've been having a really hard time finding straight information like I got a lot of information uh, from people who have done bike touring in Long Island uh, friends and colleagues who live out there and when I'm researching recent information it is not the same as what I've heard and what I've seen in other posts so it seems like the campsites like who can go to the campsite what you need to make that reservation that has changed because of COVID so make sure no matter where you're planning a bike tour especially because of COVID like look at the publication uh, date. That's super, super important. Um, also, a big part of the research that I do is calling bike shops wherever it is. So I'm gonna be in South Dakota next week and I'm gonna be doing some bike touring out there and I'll be in North Dakota. Like I'm already calling bike shops out there asking for their input on trails and routes. I'm also a big fan of having some flexibility because you don't want to lock yourself, you want a general plan, but you don't want to lock yourself in because if an opportunity arises, you want to be able to take advantage of that. Uh, but when I arrive in a city, I like to go, if I'm doing biking, I like to go to the bike shop and ask for some input. If it's not a bike trip, you know, I'll just go to like a cafe, whatever, yoga studio, because I'm a hippie, you know, and ask for input. But I was in Adirondacks a couple weeks ago, stopped at the bike shop, and got some really great input on the trails and the conditions. So absolutely, they are your best resource because they are on the ground and they are there like right now. Uh, Strava and Ride with GPS, Joe did a good job talking about them last week. Uh, you can research rides on there. I don't use, personally, I don't use those too much when I'm researching um, routes, but I, I have a lot of friends who do research routes on there. I know when I was, um, doing, uh, writing my Cuba guidebook, I paid for the premium ride with GPS account and I could see other people's routes and such. And in Cuba, it didn't come into play so much because for a lot of the longer route, there is one route, like there's no variation. Uh, but in some cases, it was a little bit helpful. So it, that's something to consider as well. Now, when you're doing your research, you want to consider where you're going to stay. Are you staying in a hotel? Are you staying in Airbnb? Are you staying with Warm showers, warm showers is kind of like couch surfing, but it's specifically for cyclists. So you can crash on someone's couch um, or they might have a backyard for you to put your tent. Um, you can get a shower. Um, so consider where you're gonna stay because knowing where you're gonna stay is gonna help you plan your route, but also planning your route is gonna help you know where you're gonna stay, right? Uh, because there might, own, there might be some routes where camping is the only option. You need to have a tent. Um, if, if you can get by without camping, well, I mean, that's up to you. You don't have to camp to do a bike tour. You know, I meet people all the time that want to do bike touring, but they're just not into camping. That's okay. I like camping, but you absolutely can do it without. So what to bring? Again, consider where you're going to stay. If you're not going to be camping, don't bring a tent, right? <laughs> don't bring a tent, a sleeping pad. Uh, a sleeping bag, because that, that's a lot of additional weight. Uh, you also want to make sure you have weather appropriate gear. Uh, if you're bringing a sleeping bag, you don't want to bring a super heavy duty sleeping bag for a summer trip, and you don't want to bring a lightweight sleeping bag for a winter trip. So make sure you're considering uh, if your gear is weather appropriate. 
is food and water going to be available? That's going to determine how much snacks you need to bring. I know in Cuba, there's long stretches of like nothing. You know, I'm going 20 miles without food. I need to bring snacks with me. Without water, I need to bring snacks with me. This picture right here is from a hiking trip I did in the Adirondacks a few weeks ago, and that's my water filter. So I'm filtering water right from the stream right there. And I use that same filter in Cuba. Um, I lead tours in Mexico and Jordan. I've used it in both of those countries. I've used it in Malaysia. It is an absolute lifesaver. So whether you're bike touring abroad or whether you're bike touring somewhere in the United States, I, I strongly recommend having a water filter if you're gonna go any stretch where you're not gonna have access to somewhere that you can fill it up. It's also really important to bring tried and true gear. Whether this is a bike, whether this is bike shorts, you do not wanna buy a bike today and go on a bike tour tomorrow that bike might not fit you perfectly. That saddle might be uncomfortable. Um, your new cycling shorts, you don't want to start riding and realize they give you saddle sores. Like that is an issue. You know, anything you're going to bring with you on a bike tour, make sure that you have tried it out. Particularly if you're going somewhere where you're not going to have access to purchasing these items. As I know in Cuba, cycling gear is just non-existent. It is non-existent. And so I had to bring everything that I was going to use. My helmet went missing the first week and I had two more months ahead of me. So I had to, you know, I got a helmet from somebody in Guantanamo and returned it in Havana, but like that was a real challenge. Um, so like I wasn't able to find like energy bars and electrolyte tabs, like those things do not exist in Cuba. We have them in the United States, but if you're gonna be in more rural areas or, you know, real off the beaten path areas, you're not gonna find a bike shop and you're not gonna find these things. So it's especially important to have everything you need um, that's perfect for your trip. Um, also battery packs, life-saving. Like even if you think you're not gonna need it, uh, like if you think that you can get from point A to point B in a day and you're gonna be staying in a hotel or whatever, you should still bring a battery pack because you never know, phones freak out sometimes. Um, it could be because of the weather, you could accidentally leave all your apps running. You want to have that so you can look up maps and call people if needed. Uh, mm, I think I meant to change this slide and I didn't. So that's me on Long Island. <laughs> uh, so yeah, again, you don't have to be an expert. Just do your research, pack good gear, go slowly, and have a backup plan. I will say when I did my Cuba bike tour, this was two years ago at this point, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified because I was selected to write that book, not specific, not because I was a bike touring pro. I was selected to write that book because I was a Cuba expert and I am a Cuba expert. There are very few people that are familiar with Cuba. Uh, thanks, Sarah, I got your text. <laughs> Um, there's very few people that are familiar with Cuba. So I was, you know, pulled on for that, but I was not a bike touring pro. I was so nervous. I know even when I landed, I was stalling the first few days. I was like, oh, I'm tired. I can't do this. I can't do this. And I was just, I was terrified um, because there's no cell reception there, you know? And I do speak Spanish fluently, but I was imagining all these things that could go wrong. And it was great. It was really great. I think for an extended bike tour, the number one thing that I wasn't expecting that was really, really helpful is I didn't anticipate how the lack of external stressors <laughs> would give me energy. So I would ride 40, 50, 60 miles in a day. And all of you in New York City that are enjoying this 95 degree humid weather every day, that is Cuba every single day. So I was bike touring in that for two months. It was exhausting. You know, and when I got to my next destination, I had to do research for the book, but like, I didn't have work emails. I didn't have, you know, any sort of business to attend to. I didn't have concerns and everyday stressors. And it didn't occur to me that the lack of those stressors allowed me to just be present. Like all I had to do that day was ride. And so what I wasn't anticipating is like, you know, when you go for a big ride on the weekend, you have like a 30, 40, 50 mile ride. It's like, oh, it's a big ride. It's great. And you go to work on Monday and like you're exhausted. I was anticipating feeling like that the whole time. And I didn't because all I had to do is ride. So uh, keep that in mind. You're going to want to do some training for the ride. Uh, so 
consider the distance, consider the elevation. Like if you're researching routes, you should be seeing the elevation. If you ride 100 miles every weekend, that's awesome. But if you ride 100 miles flat, and all of a sudden you're doing a route that's very hilly and very mountainous, it's going to be very, very challenging. Same thing if you ride bridges like every day, if you ride over, over two bridges every day and you're doing a lot of elevation, but your total ride is only 10 miles, it's going to be a challenge if you all of a sudden try to tackle a 50 mile route, even if it doesn't have elevation. So you want to keep in mind the distance and you want to keep in mind the elevation and you want to do some training rides for that. I will admit, so I've done, I've ridden a few centuries. I've ridden centuries on single speed bikes. You know, I thought I was real, you know, badass, you know, riding 108 miles on my single speed. Um, but guess what? A lot of time passed between that, like two years passed between that and when I did my bike tour in Cuba. So when I got to Cuba, I hadn't fully trained to the level that I wanted to, um, but it definitely got easier. So you want to, you want to train and you want to be ready for your ride. Um, and also there's no shame in the train if you need to. I know that picture I showed from the, the bike tour with Joe, I sure took the train back. I was tired and it was raining the next day. I got on the train with a few other people and there is no shame in that. You absolutely can do that. That's not a problem. You can take the bus um, and you can also feel okay. Like if you're staying in hotels, not a problem. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have questions. I cannot see your questions. So I'm going to keep talking um, and I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about Cuba, people tend to be interested in that. I'm not gonna give my full presentation. I usually go into like the legality of, of traveling to Cuba and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I'll give you a little bit and then maybe if people are interested in the topic, I could give a presentation in the future that's very Cuba specific. Uh, but right here you see, this is a map of Cuba and those are the routes that I have in my, in my book. So the way that I broke it down is I broke it down into day trips that can then be combined into weekly, monthly segments. So for instance, in the East, you can just do, you know, one of those sections or you could do the whole thing. And I didn't include the central of the country because it's not as interesting. <laughs> it's a lot of just like riding on highways. It's not super interesting. Uh, and so consider that if you're going to another city or you're going to another country, think about what are the activities you want to do aside from bike touring. If you want to do anything else, think about, um, what are the sites that you want to see? Think about the time of year, for goodness sakes. That makes a big difference in a hot climate like Cuba. But if you're going to another city, like are there big festivals? Um, it might be a lot of fun to go to some of those festivals. It also means that places are going to be a lot more crowded. It also means that lodging is going to be a lot more expensive and hard to come by. And it also means you might have a hard time getting campsite reservations. So consider all of that. Uh, legal travel to Cuba. I don't need to go into that. Beach, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to show some fun pictures of bikes in Cuba. Everybody bikes in Cuba. When they lost the support of the Soviet Union um, in the early 90s, everybody had bikes. They got, you know, a million bikes from China. And there was this biking culture that kind of died down, but there's still a biking culture. Uh, there's different places to ride. And again, thinking about what sort of attractions do you want and also what sort of climate. Like, do you want beaches? Do you want mountains? Do you want... Um, cities. So in Cuba, for instance, Western Cuba, you're going to see a lot of really beautiful mountains like this. Um, you can do a seven day trip. I met uh, a group of Canadians who were down there a four day trip, just like powering, like trying to do like 130, 140 miles the first day um, to get that in. And then when I was biking back to Havana, I hear beep, 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 beep on the, on the highway. And they all have their bikes strapped to the top of this car waving at me. Uh, because they decided to spend their time enjoying the mountains and the countryside and driving back. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, here's some pictures of tobacco country. That's Those are a few people on one of my tours about four years ago. Uh, Vinales again. And then Central Cuba. Central Cuba has old sugar plantations and refineries. It has one of the oldest colonial towns in the Americas. Uh, so definitely do your research. And also, this is not necessarily the most, this isn't the most popular place to bike tour in Cuba. You absolutely can. You do get people. It's not necessarily the most popular. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a destination. Just because you see this city is the most popular place, this route is the most popular place. It might be the most popular because it's the most beautiful. 
it might be the most popular just because it's the most easy to access and that doesn't necessarily make it the most interesting. Uh, so look at all of the options available to you before you choose. Classic cars, of course. Oh, and I decided to take a folding bike. I know people are surprised. Every single day people would look at me like, you're riding to Havana on that? Like they were completely in disbelief. I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> I was showing them, uh, but as you saw, I had a Surly long haul trucker. I actually just sold it a few weeks ago. Uh, but I chose to bring this bike instead just because a number of reasons. The challenge of transporting your bike. So keep that in mind. If you need to get on an airplane, <laughs> how are you going to pack your bike, right? If you're taking a train, if you're taking a bus, look at those rules. Every bus has their own rules. Sometimes you have to put it in a box. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're guaranteed it'll get on. Sometimes it's not guaranteed unless there's room and you go on last. It's like a bunch of things. But if you're going on an airplane, you do have to pay to check it. But keep in mind, you have to have a box, like bring your own bicycle you know, box, or you can bring a cardboard box. But keep in mind, if you're flying into one destination and out of another destination, how are you going to transport that bike? You can ask Judy about that next week because this crazy woman like bikes to the airport with a box, like strapped to her bike and then she breaks down her bike and flies with it and then she lands and she builds her bike straps the box back on and then like she'll leave the box to pick it up if you're in larger cities work with a bike shop like right now i'm going to south dakota and one of my friends who's going is working with the bike shops there to arrange having them save a bike box for her so on the way back she can just use their bike box in Cuba, this is not a thing. Like, there's not bike boxes. Like, the bikes that they get are bikes that they purchase from tourists or that tourists leave behind for free. So there's no bike boxes. There's not proper bike shops like you have here. So there was not an option for me to get a box from someone. I was starting in the east, going to the west. There was not going to be an opportunity for me um, to bring my bike box with me while I'm bike touring. Um, so what I decided to do is I did, I, I have a, a Samsonite case that the bike Friday came in and I left my case at the Casa, the house that I was staying at. I did my bike tour in the little circle, came and got my case, packed up my bike in the case. I took a bus to the center of Cuba where I was going to do the next part. And I have connections uh, <laughs> and I called one of my taxi drivers that I, that I work with on my trips and I had him arrange to have another driver pick up my case to bring it to Havana and then a friend stashed it for me. So that was super helpful. In a country like Cuba, you need to make arrangements for that. Um, but that was a lot easier than with a big, um, the big bike uh, that would not have fit into a regular Samsonite suitcase. Um, also, I knew that I was going to throw this bike on top of classic cars and under a bus. Like I knew I was going to do that. Uh, so I wanted something easy. Uh, this is another picture of Guantanamo. This is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, massive hills, huge hills. I think, I think Guantanamo is the prettiest part of Cuba. Massive, massive hills. Uh, it's also, there's a lot of chocolate there. It says chocolate on the right, coffee on the left. Best food in Cuba too. Uh, so... That's Fidel's grave on the right. Um, on the left is a route that I do not include in my book. I do not recommend it. It's the most beautiful route in Cuba, but you have gravel like that and massive potholes mile after mile after mile after mile. Can you camp in Cuba? Yes, you can, but I do not recommend it. I have camped um, maybe a dozen times in different beaches. It's so hot. There's so many mosquitoes. It's loud. There's not proper campsites like we have here. If you go to like a campismo, there will be reggaeton playing until three in the morning every single night. Um, some of them have donkey rides for kids. Like it's a very different experience. <laughs> they also don't have food. It's not set up for camping. And the food that you get in Cuba, you are not going to find um, like ready to eat meals or camp specific food. So camping brings on a lot of additional challenges and you absolutely can do. But I've met so many people who brought a tent with them. And after two nights, I like, forget it. I'm just going to stay in a casa. Um, so consider that if you're going to another country um, where camping poses a lot of challenges, if you need to be up at six in the morning to bike, um, you don't want music blasting at the campground until two in the morning. 
Uh, so yeah, oh my God, it's so hot there. It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's rainy. Look at the seasonal weather, especially if you're in another country. I know certain times are really rainy in Cuba. Um, this picture is from a, a tour I led in Cuba February of last year. There were big floods and we got to a point. Um, I don't do proper bike tours. I do like cultural trips. And so we'll do some sightseeing in cars. We'll do some walking tours with journalists, with historians, um, with all sorts of people. And then we'll do a few half days of biking. Uh, we do some biking in the city. It's the best way to see Havana. We also do some biking in the country. And this picture's from biking in the country. And there were huge floods. And we get to a certain point that everything is absolutely flooded. And I had to hire a man with this, was it an oxen, I guess? <laughs> I had to hire him to take the bikes to cross over. And so I went with the bikes on the first round to make sure it was safe. And it was kind of sketchy, but it worked. Um, and I came back. So like, keep in mind, if you're going to countries like this, if you're going to any sort of developing country or any country that's a little bit more relaxed or maybe doesn't have biking infrastructure, if you're really going off the beaten path, like you might run into that. And some people totally thrive on this and they're totally okay with that. And some people are not. So keep that in mind when you choose where to go. Uh, food, Cuban food is not fantastic. It is not what you have in Cuban restaurants here that is Cuban American food. Uh, but yeah, so here's some fun pictures of transportation. Like <laughs> my bike breaks down, but for some reason the bus drivers kept trying to throw the full thing on there. Like even with the, with the heavy, heavy paneers. And I was researching a guidebook. So I had like five books with me plus all my water and I'm vegan. So I had like jars of peanut butter and Lara bars and like they pick up the whole thing with all the paneers fully loaded and try to put it down there. Uh, but yeah, and they tied it to the top. Never had any problems. Um, just some of the recycling efforts in Cuba, people reusing everything. Um, yeah, Cuba, pack anything and everything, kind of like what I was saying earlier. You're not going to find sunblock. But these thing, same things go if you're going to the rural areas in the United States. Like if you're biking in the middle of nowhere, you might not find sunscreen in a little shop. Um, and then, yeah, bringing your bike to Cuba, you can, there are some places that you can rent. In my book there, I do list some places that do offer bikes in Cuba that you can rent. Um, and some people hire me to plan their, their trip to Cuba. Uh, but yeah, most people bring their own bike, but like wherever you're going, you consider the, the pros and cons of bringing your own bike, right? Your bike fits you. Okay. It fits you. You know it, you love it. It works. But there's also the, the, the challenges of bringing it. A lot of airlines charge $75. Some airlines have cut that cost. Um, but there's a lot of challenges with bringing your own bike. So you also might want to look into renting a bike. So when I'm in South Dakota, uh, one of my friends is bringing her own bike out there. I'm actually going to be renting a bike uh, to be doing some bike touring out there. So consider that as well. And if that's the case, you want to try it out, like go to the shop the day before. You don't want to, you know, arrive the day of, like, let me get this bike and it, it doesn't fit you well. Um, that's my, that's my book. That's my free pub. Um, this is an old slide. I will not be at REI. Um, <laughs> I was there in February. I was supposed to be there again this, this spring and that got canceled. Um, so yeah, that's me. If anybody wants to follow me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Escaping NY, it's my company, Escape in New York. Um, and that is me with my Viva Fidel poster. I love this picture. This is from May Day, the Workers' Rights Day, a number of years ago in Santiago de Cuba. I was hitchhiking to my next destination and I found that on the ground after the May Day protest and held out my finger and people loved it. And I did get picked up and I got taken to my next destination. So yeah, time for questions. Sarah, can you get back? Sarah, do you see me? All right, hi, I'm back. Um, <laughs> what is the number one piece of gear, local or international trips, that you couldn't go on a bike touring trip without? Oof, one? Oof. Like you have a long just trip? Saddle, 100% saddle, yeah. because I am sensitive. And I can handle like a day ride, you know, I've sometimes rented a bike for a day or two days and it's just like, oof, that is not that comfortable. You do not want to be on a long ride with a saddle that doesn't work. So do you have a recommendation for a saddle? <sighs> yes and no. Like I feel like saddles are super specific. Um, I do, oh dang, what do I have? As previously, previously established, I can't get up to go check. 
Um, That's okay. Because it is too hot in my apartment. I am not fully dressed. <laughs> but um, yeah, I will buy our speakers or shirts. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. Surface. Sur yeah, I have one. I think okay. it's called Surface. I put that. I have oh. different saddles on all three of my bikes. I know the Terry saddles are really nice. The Terry are female specific. I have so that bike, yeah. my road bike that's hanging up right there, there. Mm -hmm. That I have a Terry saddle. My Bike Friday tour, um, little touring folding bike. I have. A, I think it's called Surface, oh. and it's it is. It doesn't look cool. Like I look like a delivery guy. Like it's like, it's kind of lame, but it is so comfortable and I love it. Um, and then I have, yeah, yeah, it's super comfortable. Cool. I like the ones with the slit. You um, still don't have any questions. That's fine. Is anybody even on here? Like maybe the internet went out and nobody's here anyways. And I'm just rehearsing for whatever. I um, am frozen. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I use a specialized saddle on my single speed slash fixed gear bike. I use a specialized, um, I think it's a gel one, but yeah, I, I would say, I would say a comfortable saddle is number one. Um, and also underrated sleeves, sun sleeves. Anybody who follows me on Instagram knows I am just in love with my sleeves. I wear my cycling sleeves like every day of the year. Even if I am not biking, I wear them walking to the corner store because I care about my skin and it's so much easier than putting on sunblock. And it also protects against not just the sun, but it helps protect against the heat. Like people think like wearing sleeves is gonna make you hotter, but that's not true. Cause when you put on the sun sleeve that is specific for the sun, these are not like arm warmers. Um, it helps like keep the sun and the heat off of you so you stay cooler. So that's a strong recommendation. Cool, yeah, I've never even heard of those before. We'll check them out. All right, we have some uh, audience questions. You ready? Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's gonna be a, a long one. Do you take energy drinks, bars, coffee, or is it better to detox from these when you're biking? And what about drinking? Um, does having a beer or three after a long ride have a big difference on your performance the next day? Well, I think that depends on who you talk to, and I'm sure there's a lot of different theories on that. Um, I have friends that I have seen drink impressive amounts of beer, like during bike tours and before, and they are fine. So I think that is very personal. Uh, that is something to try out. So like do some biking at home, like get drunk tonight and ride 50 miles tomorrow and see how you feel. <laughs> so that'd be a good way. Um, I don't drink energy drinks because I think they're gross. I don't trust what's in them, but I use the Noon tablets, the N-U-U-N. I use those tablets because those are, it's kind of like the good, the electrolytes you find in Gatorade without the junk. Yeah. Um, oh, if anybody goes, I have a little travel store on my website, escapingny.com. If you go to my little travel store, I list all my favorite products and it's not all bike stuff, but there is some bike stuff there. And I have like my favorite sun sleeves. I have my favorite, like, you know, sunblock. I have these noon electrolyte, electrolyte tablets, which I really, really like. Um, in terms of energy bars, I, I like Lara bars because I think they're, or I think they're a little bit more natural. If I have to, like I'll get a cliff bar. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like, they have a lot of corn syrup in their, in their wow. bars. And I know that gives you energy. That's not my favorite thing to eat. Um, but yeah, that's me personally. I brought a ton of Lara bars to Cuba with me just because they don't sell that stuff. Um, but I ate so many Lara bars that like, I don't eat them that much anymore because I'm just like still sick of them. <laughs> but yeah. they're nice to have on hand. Um, and granola bars. I'll usually have like a Lara bar or a granola bar if I'm doing a long ride. I'll have it in my, in my bag or in my pocket in my jersey. And coffee, Perfect. was that a question? Coffee? I don't drink coffee just because I don't like it, but I don't, I think it's fine. I think most cyclists I know drink coffee and it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big coffee drinker. Yeah. Give shout out to coffee. All right. Um, what is the orange filter? Woo, Grail. Get that. Go to, okay. So go to my travel store. That is on there. That is a lifesaver. It's called Grail and it is wonderful. And if you go, so if you go to my travel store, I also have a video there of me using it showing you how easy it is. All right. Uh, did you experience any road rage in Cuba against cyclists? How no, because there's not that many. <laughs> <laughs> <There we go. laughs> 
Uh, and great. not even road rage against cars because there's not that many cars. Like I usually the the people I was most likely to see were dudes chopping the grass with machetes. Like they don't have lawnmowers. Like so, like every morning I'd ride and I would see guys with their machetes and they'd wave. I see school children, but you don't pass too many people to be quite honest, since it's very very country in most yeah. of the most of the island. Cool. Well, those are all our questions, so thank you. All right, um, that's fine. If anybody has other questions, um, definitely, I know I'm plugging Judy's thing next week. I'll be in South Dakota with my, I won't be able to be on that one, I don't think, but Judy is amazing. She is a bike tourist extraordinaire. She has a million wonderful stories that I'm disappointed to miss her talk next week, but she will be able to answer probably any and every bike touring question that you have. And she's been to Cuba, she spent a couple weeks um, I helped her plan her trip when she was doing her bike tour there. She called me and I helped her plan her trip. And then after she went, then I got her input when I was planning my bike tour there because I hadn't bike toured there. So she'd be a great person to ask questions as well. That's awesome. And you're on Instagram. Escaping uh, NY. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we do have one last question. Do you think you'll be able to do tours again soon? I don't know. I was supposed to lead a tour in Jordan, which is just like, Oh, my love in April that I bumped to September, which I'm now bumping to next year. Uh, I have a day of the dead trip to Mexico in October, but Mexico is not looking great now. My November trip to Cuba. I just, I don't trust it. I don't, I don't, I don't trust it because we're not doing a good job. Like these other countries, like Jordan is doing a great job. I think Jordan is a very safe place to go right now, but, um, I've canceled everything because I don't want us to get there. And like, while we're flying, the government decides that Americans now have, have to quarantine for two weeks when they land. Like, that's not how I want anybody to spend their trip. No. Uh, so I'm not going to resume tours until I think it's safe for Americans until I think that Americans won't be quarantined when they get there basically. Right. Which might be a while. Yeah. So I'm doing more local stuff and a lot of people have asked me to plan local trips. Um, yeah. Like they've been following me on Instagram. Yeah, and it's maybe it's it's time that people don't realize how much work it is to plan a trip. Like you have to be deeply familiar with the area. You have to have lots of contacts. Like it is seriously time consuming. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't right. know. I'm kind of enjoying like just bike touring on my own. You know, we'll yeah. see. But maybe that's something I'll look into because I am getting a lot of requests for doing little things in the Northeast. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well. We're excited to find out when you do launch your local tours. Um, okay, cool. Um, uh, okay, we have one more question, which I actually can start to answer. Um, do you have any resources on how to get started if you're a complete newbie to long distance biking and don't currently own a bike? Um, so I can start and say that last week we had Joe from 718 Cyclery talk and he did a really comprehensive intro to bike touring. And so I would suggest going and rewatching that cause he kind of broke it down into like all the different things, um, that you might need to know from safety to bikes, uh, to gear and all that. Um, and I, if you don't currently own a bike, I don't, I don't have any specific advice for that. So Cassandra, do you have, I do test out. Test out bikes, like go to your local bike shop and test ride the bike. I would also say rent the bike for a day or two because I mean, you can ride around the block a few times. It'll give you a little bit of an idea, but if you're going to invest in a bike to do long distance riding on it, you should, I think you should rent that bike for at least a day or two and see what you think about it. And you might be able to rent some gear. Talk to your friends. Um, I actually just wrote an article for the daily beast about wilderness hiking. And a lot of the tips I gave in there apply to biking. Talk to your friends, borrow their gear. Like I did that for hiking and biking. Um, borrowing gear from friends, renting it, and getting an idea for what you like is really important. And also jo join, you know, bike rides in the city. Like hopefully Mappy, I will be doing some bike rides soon. I run a meetup group, um, New York City Cycling and Food. You could look it up. There are a lot of co-ed groups. There are female specific groups. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of different groups for all different skill levels. Uh, that's gonna be a great way to meet cyclists, learn different routes and ask them for ideas. Cause I know I've gotten a lot of my ideas from other cyclists that I've met. Yeah, I love that, cool. All right, so that's it. Thank you again. Um, and yeah, everyone, 
come hang out next week with Judy. She has lots of stories. And yes, shout out to Cassandra for introducing us to her. She's awesome. Yes, she really is. Yeah, she's fun. Um, cool. And then, yeah, thank you. That's it for now. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody.